Hey y'all, yo, what is up? So, boy, a spiritual whistleblower giving out the tea. Go watch her video on uh, ACC Direct and his twin girls. There is a link in her uh, her video with a uh, lipstick alley, y'all. So my nosy ass, I gotta know. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean. Hey, if the evidence is there or, you know, things is there, this is just funny to me how people are being exposed, okay? Everybody there on ASSC Direct's channel, you know, they're pandering to him, he's pandering to them, you know, this false image that he had or he tried to portray with him being in suits and speaking so proper and and all it is but you talking down on women talking about you know how they look and this and that where people live a socialist a classist you know you're judging people you're judging a book based on its cover you know what i'm saying people go through situations you don't really know why they ended up broke, homeless, or whatever the case may be. But that's just a season in their life because God put them through that situation to teach them a lesson or, you know, whatever it is for their spiritual journey, their spiritual path. I don't sit there and look down on somebody just because they homeless or just because they broke. Now, if a motherfucker get crazy with me, yeah, I'm going to say some shit. Because if you're trying to come over here and hurt my feelings, trust me, I could crush your soul. Like, that's how I really feel. But on some respectful stuff, if they express like, hey, I'm just going through this situation, I can be understanding, you know, sympathetic, empathetic, you know. But it's crazy because y'all, y'all need to go and look in that link and um yeah y'all y'all need to go click that link read all of what's in that blog because all of that was 2018 i found his channel i think like 2017 ish somewhere in there and i i actually really kind of stopped listening to him like last year i was listening to some videos here and there but i noticed personally it wasn't really going anywhere. Like, I mean, it wasn't really helpful. But then, too, I'm so far in my healing journey that I really ain't even got to watch the channels and stuff no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just actually back to just really just living my life and doing me. Because realistically, when you're hurt and you're healing and you're vulnerable or you're mentally fogged and you're trying to figure out what the hell you've been through and you go through the looping of like replaying instances things that a person has said or done you know your suffering is all in your head it, it real. i'm not saying it's all in your head like your reality doesn't exist what i'm saying is you have the power to stay in that loop and keep replaying the the pain that somebody inflicted on you psychologically, mentally, spiritually, financially, or whatever it was they did. Or you can just accept it, grieve it, you know what I'm saying, go through the pain of it. Because on the other side is healing. And once you're healed, it's nothing but a scar. And you can't really even pick at the scar because it's actually healed you know what i'm saying nobody can like try to shame you about it nobody can talk down and make you feel bad about it because hey you made this decision to enter a relationship with this individual that individual was deceptive they portrayed themselves to be a particular way and then as time went on they switched up on you you know what i'm saying the bait and switch, you know, and then next thing you know, you find out they aren't who they say they are, you know what I'm saying, and that's the reason why, like, in past videos, I'll tell you, if you're just meeting somebody, you have to, you have to take it slow, you know what I'm saying, a narcissist, 
their weapon is speed. You just met them. You just exchanged numbers with them. They trying to act like y'all been best friends for 10, 20 years. They trying to, oh my God, love at first sight. Um, That is off as hell to me. The feeling of, you know, what society likes to say, oh, he or she makes me feel, well, I don't know for men if y'all ever felt butterflies, but for women, where they try to pander to women on these movies, shows, and Disney movies, up here talking about some, yeah, oh, I feel butterflies. Yeah, those butterflies is anxiety because your body senses that this person is evil and has malicious intent, bad intentions for you, and subconsciously, spiritually, your body is aware of what's going on. This is why you need to be in tune with your body. This is why you need to be in tune with your mind, your heart, yourself. Because when you are in tune with you, you are also aligning yourself to be in tune with God because you can actually listen. You know what I'm saying? As long as you're seeking validation outside of yourself, you're not listening to yourself. You know, other people can try to talk you into telling you, oh, well, well, maybe this and maybe that and maybe this. No, they just need to shut up because at the end of the day, everything you need to know is inside you. You've been gaslighted for a long time. You've been conditioned for a long time to the point you don't trust yourself. So if you don't trust yourself, of course you don't trust nobody else. Once you learn to trust yourself, you can trust others to show you who they are, whether it's good or whether it's bad. It don't really matter, y'all, because at the end of the day, when you know you got that divine connection with God and you know that you are good, you know that you're happy, you're healing, you're moving forward, your money's getting better, you know, you're progressing in life. You don't got somebody tying and anchoring you down and all of that, making you miserable you know, creating uh, destitution, you know what I'm saying? Trying to make you broke as hell when when you, you y'all, how many people have y'all known? Like, if you're good at money management or you're financially literate, right? You're good at saving. How many people always be always begging you for money? You know what I'm saying? And then the moment you tell them no, like one time, they try to act like you haven't told them yes a million times before. But right now you just ain't got it or you can't do it because you got your own situation going on. You know what I'm saying? But I just find it interesting what's going on between, you know, spiritual whistleblower and ASSC right now. Because this is this is one thing about a hit dog hollering. Why, how come you haven't addressed a uh, lipstick uh, alley about the allegations of him being a deadbeat father since 2018? Um, I've been following Spiritual Whistleblower for a couple of years now. I think I found her in like 2020, I think. But I did go through like a lot of her old videos. So I probably have seen like, I don't watch her TikTok because I don't really be on TikTok. But as far as YouTube goes, you know, um, yeah, I've watched pretty much majority of her videos and she just speaks facts from her experiences. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing about some of these other channels that made me side eye them because just like those of y'all who've been following me, I be telling y'all about my mama. I be telling y'all about exes. I be telling y'all about fake ass friends and just different experiences that I've learned from along my journey of dealing with these toxic devils, you know, these damn hellhounds. But Satan ain't blessing his soldiers, y'all, because while he over there uh, threatening to sue, you know, spiritual whistleblower... And this is how you know he is sad, y'all. He over there talking about some the broken whistleblower or whatever he had named his recent video. You're mad, sir. You're mad because the allegations against you for being a deadbeat father, but you're pandering to women. Most of your following is single mothers at that. 
And any woman that is still following his ass, they're psychologically ill. I'm not going to say that like if his videos aren't helping you, don't listen or whatever. But what I am saying is, you know, he his stuff really isn't even helpful anymore. Like, you know, some of the stuff he talks about, it's like the message wasn't hidden. It wasn't his message wasn't messaging. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. You're just sitting there like it, it sounds like regurgitated, recycled information, like when you really think about it. And so it's funny because I swear, like no sooner than I'm dealing with a situation, spiritual whistleblower be talking about it. I'd be like, oh, she's just confirming a situation that I'm going through. That's one thing that I love about God, man. When you're going through a situation and you're like wondering, like, am I tripping? This person is acting like this, saying this. That's weird. Like, is this person this? And next thing you know, boom, you know, a video will pop up or something will pop up that will confirm what you already know, what you already been feeling and thinking. You know what I'm saying? That's con that's just external confirmation because you already feel it inside. You already thinking like something's weird, something's off, something's not right, something don't feel right. You know what I'm saying? But I I find this interesting. I'm just back here sipping my tea. But y'all, y'all need to go click, y'all need to go to her channel, click on that uh that blog and read all that shit. Because all of that stuff came out. So now what I'm about to do is I'm about to go actually watch um what was her name? Strong Mommy Chrissy. Apparently she's like a mother of like eight, nine kids or something like that, but she, in so many words, supposedly based on the blog, uh, is a YouTuber that had twins with Quinn Holiday, aka SSC Direct. And um, y'all, it's funny. These women on this blog, they was uh talking about how, like, you know, damn, he's a deadbeat. Apparently, Quinn was married. You know, I would have never guessed that because, again, uh, he was never transparent with, like, his life or with his situation. Nothing. I had ordered his book, read his book, but in the book, um, Thriving After a Narcissist is what it's called. Um, the, To me, it wasn't really no content, no real information. It wasn't like he went into detail and described his situation with his ex-girlfriend that he had an apartment with. It was really, really vague. It was really just, it just seemed secretive as hell, right? Now, to me personally, if you've truly been through narcissistic abuse, you can be transparent and honest about your background, you know, your childhood, how you were raised, you know, what you've gone through with family, friends and and workplaces or whatever. You can be transparent and honest because when you have no skeletons in your closet, who can shame you? What's done in the dark always comes to the light. So if you're all if you're just authentic anyway, what is going to come to light? You know what I'm saying? What what why why you hiding? That that's all I'm saying. So it's like listening to spiritual whistleblower um, basically call him out. Now, he wasn't making no videos about her. Now, all of a sudden, because she put the blog out there, now everybody's going to look at the blog, going to uh, Strong Mommy Chrissy's uh, YouTube channel, listening to what she got to say. Um, I haven't gotten there to listen to what she says, but based on the blog, he straight told that woman, fuck them kids. I'll see their asses when they 18. I respect all the fathers out there who actually love their children and they love their daughters and you love your daughters enough to be in their life and to tell them the type of men that they should be with or that they should be looking for to avoid a lot of these Satanists, these damn hellhounds and devils that will do nothing but just bring them down and ruin their damn life. 
and steal life from them. And what I mean by that is get the woman pregnant and then re and then tell her she need to go get an abortion. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So, you know, a person like that, I would have never guessed that Quinn Holiday would have had kids because he never once in any of his videos since I discovered him around 2017-ish, somewhere in there, because that's when I started my narcissist journey when I found out what narcissism was. I was Googling, finding articles. Then I came across like YouTube channels and stuff like that. When you got to be secretive about your life, that's a red flag because why can't you be like, if your exes or your relationship business is in the past, you ain't got to drop, you ain't got a name drop. But you can go in detail about your experience. Oh, yeah, well, my ex has said this or did that or whatever, whatever. And then on top of that, y'all, is about body language. Body language is everything. You know what I'm saying? If you can be all creepy and just, yeah, I recall this information. And you can stare into the camera and you, like, barely blink. That's weird. See... Uh, a, a body language expert that I follow on social media. I think I follow him on IG and YouTube, but he breaks down micro expressions, body language, because micro expressions and body language is 99% of communication. Verbal communication is probably a good 50, 60% because a lot of people don't even know how to communicate because if they did, why when motherfuckers be throwing shade, they be all indirect? Oh, well, it couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. Translation. Oh, you better than me because you stupid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know how people be trying to throw shade indirectly because they don't have the guts to actually directly just say what it is that they trying to say. Oh, your, your outfit ugly. You stupid. You whatever their thoughts is, they too scared to say it so they try to hide and be all like you know inconspicuous and incognito and low-key you know what I'm saying say what you need to say get it on up off your chest you know I can respect somebody that's direct versus somebody that's indirect I can respect somebody that I, I may not like what you say I may not want to hear it but again, I mean, at the end of the day, if somebody told me they don't like my hair, my outfit or whatever, you think I give a damn? Because you didn't spend money to get your hair done or get my hair done. You didn't spend money to buy my outfit. So what makes you think I care? This is my avatar. As long as I feel good in my skin, as long as I love my hair, as long as I love my outfit, that's what matters. You know, I see a lot of people out here looking crazy on these trends and wearing stuff that I would never wear, but I let them do them. I don't care because how somebody dress, how somebody talks, walks, anything like that, are they causing anybody harm? Are they a danger to anyone based on their hairstyle, their, you know, uh, whether they talk ebonically or they enunciate and pronounce pronounce uh sorry y'all i'm getting tongue-tied pronounce their words properly you know what i'm saying like man and it's so funny because like me and my uh guy we was up there talking about this like the other night we were talking about how codependent people are social climbers and it's crazy because I never heard like the social climber uh, terminology until me and him talked about it because he told me he was reading articles and stuff like that on codependent people based on his ex and stuff like that, based on previous exes that I've had who I know for a fact are narcissists or narcissistic at the very least, but they are dysfunctional, toxic, misogynistic. They don't like women. They are down low, gay. You know, I don't got time for that. I'm not no fucking cover girl for no gay ass nigga. You know, 
And to the men out there dealing with gay bitches, you are not no cover story for no gay bitch. These closeted motherfuckers, I don't respect them. I respect the gays that can come out and say, I like my Bucci cat fucked. You know, I like sucking dick, licking balls. You know, I'm a carpet pussy muncher. I'm the munch or whatever these little new terminologies is that these little, you know, youngsters be having nowadays. Um, I can respect somebody that could come out and straight be who they are. The ones that hide who they are, them the ones that you got to watch, them the liars. Those are the master manipulators. Those are the deceitful people because why you got to hide who you are? It's 2023. You know, if you like the same sex, you like the same sex. And so, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, at the end of the day, that's between you and God. You know what I'm saying? That you laying with the same sex. That's that's your that's your judgment. I I could care less, you know. But for the most part, like when people cannot be direct, transparent, authentic, they get very very angry. You know what I'm saying? And uh. I, I'm just enjoying the showdown. I am. I mean, I am enjoying the... I, I, I'm just sitting back with my tea. I'm listening to her. I'm not really focused on him because, I mean, you a hit dog and you hollering. Because you have way more followers than she does. And I'm talking about spiritual whistleblower. ASCC Direct had a YouTube channel way before Spiritual Whistleblower did. You know what I'm saying? He has a bigger following than she does. So my thing is, right, if I'm a little person in this individual's eyes, why are you responding to me because I'm calling you out? Why are you responding to me unless the accusations and the alleged rumors are true? If it wasn't true, then you would address it, correct? I, I, I'm i just, I'm just giving y'all something. I mean, you know, if somebody, you know, tried to say that I was like a dead meat beat mother or, or I was whatever, whatever, you know, I would address it and I would let the chips fall where they may because those who like you, they like you. And you got to understand when people want to find a reason to dislike you, they're going to believe the rumors and they're going to believe the gossip and they're going to believe all of this. But this is strong evidence from what, you know, I'm gathering, the intel that I'm seeing, the receipts and the things that's going on. Because LSA, Lipstick Alley, is a very popular blog that has way more followings than Quinn Holiday. So... It's interesting to me how he's threatening her with defamation, but you ain't said nothing to Lipstick Alley. You know, because I'm pretty sure they would have said something if you if you went for them. So, you know, and then now all of a sudden he made a video. Oh, uh, I'm not she's not even worth suing. But y'all check this out. So somebody had made the comment that they did some digging on him and found out that he filed for bankruptcy last year. So if you filed for bankruptcy last year, but you have over 100,000 subscribers to YouTube and you've been making money off of YouTube for years. Yeah, you broke from paying child support, bro, bro. For twins. How many other kids do you have that you don't claim or take care of? How many other, uh, and, and, and I would imagine that since apparently he was married and he never spoke on him being married, he always tried to make himself appear single, you know what I'm saying? Whole time you in a marriage and all this, just like Derek Jackson, y'all. For a long time, Derek Jackson, nobody knew that this man was married. You know what I'm saying? And only when he started feeling bad or one of his side chicks threatened to expose his ass, now suddenly you want to sit there and tag your wife and everybody's like, hold on, what? He's married? 
Now, I get it. You can be private, but there's a fine line between between being private and being secretive. I'm just saying. So just just like it came out with Derek Jackson that we discovered that he was married because I think like in 2018 or 2020 or some shit, he posted his wife, the picture, pictures of their wedding and shit like that. And then not even a year or so later, now y'all are divorcing. Hmm. Hmm. This whole scandal breaks out. She over there trying to pander to women. I wouldn't follow her ass because ain't no way you've been dealing with that narcissist for that many years. And then you basically are in separation or divorced for only, I don't know, six months or so, maybe a year. I don't really remember, but you have not had enough time to heal, in my opinion. And nah, nah, sweetheart, I, I wouldn't listen to you. You know, but but that's that's somebody who supposedly believes in God and all of that. But y'all can go and look up Denia Jackson on YouTube. She was up there putting spells and curses on people and all of that. But yet you're supposed to be a Christian. <laughs> you seem like a fake ass Christian. Because, see, if I was to sit there and spell cast on people, I'm going to prayer between me and God. And it's really not me casting spells and curses. It's me asking for justice because I've been wronged. And God, when he gives justice, when he dishes out an ass whooping, (laughs) can't nobody stop it. So, you know, gracefully move on, do you? But y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think about all this going down. Because y'all, I've been telling y'all about these fake ass holy narcs, these fake ass Christians, these man- these master manipulators that be using God. Oh, and then that's another thing I want to mention too. You know, um, I noticed that with some of the channels, they don't mention God. You know what I'm saying? They always talk about the subject of a narcissist as if they're speaking from them being a narcissist and them doing kind of like HG Tudor. I respect HG Tudor, you know, but he knows that he don't want to show his face on YouTube because that would fuck up his supply. He is a diagnosed sociopath narcissist. He's wrote books and stuff too. Lee Hammock, a diagnosed narcissist, self-aware narcissist. I can respect a motherfucker that can tell you straight up, hey, I'm a whole demon out here. Because you know what? I can respect that. Give me some tips on your kind. Tell me how to avoid your kind. Give me the scoop. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, can, I can respect someone like that. But you can't respect somebody that pretends to be a nice guy, now nice girl. I told y'all about that. I told y'all about narcissists and being nice. They use that nice crap to reel you in. Because you got to understand, the internet is their playground, y'all. They can get on this here internet and pretend to be anybody in the world that they want to be. And they think... Well, ain't nobody going to do research on me. Ain't nobody going to this. Ain't no, because they think people are dumb. That's one thing about a narcissist. They underestimate victims. Victims, you know, they do a background check and find out you're an ex-con, ex-felon. You know, you file for bankruptcy. You low down gay. You you fuck trannies. You, you didn't did, you know what I'm saying? All this shit. Now, now you want a ghost, you know, cause, cause it didn't sit right with me when he was talking about being ghosted isn't a bad thing. How did you feel if you've ever been in a situation where you've been ghosted? Me personally, it didn't feel good, you know, and then not only do the individuals that ghost you tend to spin the block, why are you spinning the block? You basically told me you don't fuck with me with your actions. You know what I'm saying? 
ignoring calls, ignoring texts, or they put you on the block list or some weird shit. Okay, well, fuck you too then, because life goes on. Don't be trying to spend the block because you see my money up. Don't be spending a block because you see that, you know, I'm living a better quality life, moved on. You know, and that's the thing. They don't want you to move on. They want you to be stuck and in limbo and, and like, you know, they want an ego boost. It don't matter, man or woman, they want an ego boost. They want to know you still an option to them. No, they showed you who they was. Believe it. And gone about your business. But for you to, and, and I noticed that about narcissistic people. When they explain things, they always try to make it seem like they're the victim, but they're the victimizer. They always try to make it seem like they're the abused one when they're the abuser. And that is exactly how my mom would do. Anybody out there that'll listen to her smear my name in dirt, that will side with her, that like her, that trust her, to me, they a damn fool. And I don't want them around me because I view my mom as the wicked witch of the West. And anybody that was on my channel last year and be in the comments, oh, you shouldn't talk about your mama. I'm not talking about her to gossip. I'm speaking from experience. And can't nobody invalidate that. Motherfuckers really be trying to come over here on my channel and trying to, you know, downplay and dismiss the abuse that I have endured psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, and physically from that bitch. You can't tell me shit. So when I start getting them kind of vibes from people or they start speaking like they're siding with your abuser or, you know, stuff like that, you got to let them go. You got to unfollow, unsubscribe. You got to get like spiritual whistleblower said get your discernment up you know and that's the number one thing y'all that's why they be trying to gaslight us they be deflecting and dodging and avoiding accountability they be blame shifting and all of that because they don't want you speaking the truth of what they're doing they want you to sit down shut up and take their shit but anyways, y'all, y'all comment down below and let me know what y'all think about what's going on on this here internet in the narcissistic abuse uh, and spiritual and all it is. I mean, at the end of the day, God is revealing who's who at the end of the day. So I'm so curious about what's going to happen. I am. I mean, I'm all for it. You know, I love the exposure. I love it because demons need to be exposed. Seriously. At the end of the day, Derek Jackson, his whole scandal broke out. You know, he's a cheater. He's a liar. You know, all of that. You know, and people still follow him, still buy his books, still do that. So you know what? There's still dumbass people in the world. There's still fucking fools. Fools will be fools. So, hey, I just want to know, you know, who's who. And based on what I see and what I discern and what I see with my conscious physical eyes and what I hear and what I feel, you know what I'm saying? What has been brought to my awareness, I can't ignore it. That That's called a conviction. When something has been brought to your attention. Ignorance is no longer bliss, folks. We are in the age of Aquarius where knowledge is power. Knowledge is everything. Knowledge is free. Because it's on this here internet. But anyways, y'all, peace. Positive energy always creates elevation, y'all. I'm all for the showdown.